And what do you make of Joe Andreessen? I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to make the 53-man roster. They like what he does. They love his instincts. I think you throw that guy out there on the waiver wire at the end of camp before the season, somebody's going to pick him up. They don't want to lose him. He's going to make the team. We'll start with this question from Robin. So there's still a damn good defense. I have zero problem with them bringing this guy in. All right, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel presented by Connors and Ferris. Mike Catalana, I am Jenna Cottrell. Dan Fates with a well-deserved day off. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And welcome to the second installment of You Ask, We Answer presented by Stellar Roofing, Windows, and Siding. We appreciate everything that they're doing. And we want to start with kind of the news of the day of what happened. We're also going to get into a little bit of questions about Backup QB. Joe Andreessen. I know a lot of people want to talk about him. Uh, the Bills, what they've done, changing maybe too many things and what we've seen so far. So let's start, though, news of the day because we're recording this on Monday. A lot going on with the Bills, Mike. There is. I just wanted to let everybody know that during my vacation week, I worked on not interrupting. It's a lot easier when there's just two of us. <laughs> For some reason, when Dan is here or there's three of us, you just, we're all yeah. ready to jump. Well, we are, Dan and I are. Anyhow, so rested, relaxed. It's nice that the Bills didn't score a touchdown while I was gone. <laughs> They're waiting for you. <laughs> I know, so we'll see if they do. All right, let's start with that. Um, I think Sean McDermott said the ones will not play. Correct. He also said that Josh Allen was not going to play in this game. So I think the original plan probably would have been for Mitch Trubisky mm -hmm to be playing with the ones, get the ones a little more time, keep Josh Allen out. And we know what happened last week where with the weather, he decided, hey, Josh isn't playing starters, only a few guys played, and, and that's the way it worked out. They have so many injuries. It is now protect yeah. the guys who are healthy, try to get some of the other ones back. And there really are, Jenna, two positions that I think they're really the most concerned about. It's the wide receiver position and it's the safety position. Yeah. I mean, Mike Catalana, Mike Catalana, Sean McDermott, <laughs> sorry, was saying today yeah. uh, or on Monday just about in terms of the injuries and how many guys are Mitch Trubisky, Marquez Valdez scaling, Quentin Morris are week to week, out multiple weeks. Also, Damar Hamlin yeah. and Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel popping up as well. Yeah. That was someone I was not really expecting to have a week to week injury. It really is something that is concerning. And you know what? The first uh you ask, we answer. I'm gonna ask you, Mike, because <laughs> it feels like there every year we talk about injuries. And that is a huge piece of this game, unfortunately. Next man up, what depth did this team have? But does it feel like this year in particular, we are seeing more? Or is it just recency bias? No, I mean, look, you know, the way Mitch Trubisky got hurt, the way MVS got hurt, they took hits in a game, that happens. I'm a little concerned about the soft tissue stuff the hamstrings, that's happened. Yeah. A lot of hamstrings, mm -hmm. calf for Austin Johnson, just thinking of other players, why they're out. That turf toe thing with Curtis Samuel, he's had it. You looked it up. He had yeah. it last season, right, in 2023, yeah. uh, which is always a worry. It's just, it's all piling up. And at those two positions, the biggest positions of turnover for this roster, and now with the injuries. Now, you want something positive. Cole Bishop and Mike Edwards are both now going to do individual work mm -hmm. and more walkthrough at practice for this week. I don't know, they're not going to play on Saturday. So those two will both go into the regular season without having taken a snap in a Bills uniform. Not ideal for two new players but at least they're trending on an uptick. I'm worried about the wide receiver position. The two most experienced guys they brought in are both week to week now, Curtis Samuel and MVS. And you can say what you want about MVS and where he is on this team. The guy's lined up and played in the NFL a lot, and he does not look, you know, that's going to be tough for him to be ready for the start of the season. Yeah, definitely. I, I will say, going back to your earlier point, is encouraging Mike Edwards, Cole Bishop. That at least feels to be moving in the right direction. but. You could also talk about, in terms of just this week looking ahead, 
backup quarterback and what the Bills are going to do there because Mitch Trubisky dealing with that knee issue uh, and they had Shane Buchel, their third string quarterback who ended up getting injured. They signed Ben DiNucci and let's go. We'll go to our first question from Sherbonnery Chatterjee who had a question last week. So great questions. My concern is backup QB. What do you guys see and feel about it? Well, there's two parts to that. One, to what you're just saying. Ben DiNucci has at least been in the NFL and has played in games if he needs to be for, say, week one. Now, as we're recording this, we haven't heard anything yet. Sean McDermott did say that, you know, Brandon Bean and his staff are working on it. They have to bring in a quarterback. They, ha they have to. And by the time you guys hear this, they may have already signed somebody uh, they have a history of bringing in guys for that third preseason or in many years, fourth preseason game. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Matt Leinart, uh, <laughs> I think it was uh, the other Sims brother. I mean, they've brought in some guys at the end Case to play. Keenum. Yes, they come in, but he ended up being on the team. Yeah. They've had guys in. Do you think they go back to the Matt Barkley well? Not a bad idea. I mean, he knows the op well. Yeah. I mean, he does, and he's comfortable with everything that they're doing and knows all the players there. So I don't know if they will. Uh, but in this case, so that is for this week, right, where you're saying, okay, yeah. somebody's going to play in that preseason game. And you can't make Ben DiNucci go out there and run. I guess you could. He could play the whole game, but you got to keep him healthy yeah. as the backup. McDermott was asked about the injury part of it. And he's like, you know, some guys are closer than others in that week to week status. But I will say this. Sometimes I hear people talk about the backup quarterback and it frustrates me when they give this answer. Well, if Josh gets hurt, they're done. Anyhow, I, I feel the same way as you, right? Because what I'm going to say is if Josh got knocked out for the season, I can say, God forbid that happens to this team. That's different. And that makes it tough. Mm -hmm. But your backup quarterback needs to play if you need him for a play, 10 plays, a uh, game, two games. games, three games. Yeah. You know, if you say, you know, Josh did this, they're going to sit him for three games or a couple, you know, and see, mm -hmm. you need a backup quarterback that can go out there and play and give you a chance to win. I, I've used it before, the idea of can that quarterback play two games and win one of them for you? Yeah. And that's, I agree with you when people are like, oh, if Josh is out, it's over. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. If Mahomes is out, it's yeah, over. Exa yeah. No, you know, Sherlock. Right. But you're right. In a pinch or in a spot, or if you need to, can you have the ability to rely on someone else other than Josh to just keep the team afloat? And we actually, we saw Matt Barkley do that a couple years ago. I'm thinking yep. of that win they had at MetLife where he was able to do enough. And that's actually why on Saturday I was like, all right, let's see what Mitch can do. I right know. And it was not good. He no. was holding on to the ball. It felt like so long. I mean, there were just opportunities. You saw some guys wide open. He was unable to make passes. Obviously, now with the injury, it makes things a little bit different. But do you think the Bills would go after a Ryan Tannehill? Or do you think that would just be too much money with where they're at? I I would say they have faith in Trubisky. I don't know where it's warranted. I don't love Trubisky. I didn't like bringing him back. They have faith in him. If he's healthy, I don't think they'll make a move like that. Mm -hmm. If they're worried about him not being healthy, then maybe they do. There are going to be quarterbacks out there they that are, are. available yeah. as it gets later. You do worry about early in the season. Like, you have two games within 10, 11 days, mm -hmm. right? Whatever, however you do the numbers. Um, the Sunday, Starting Thursday. Sunday, coming back on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's pretty easy. If a guy's not ready for week one, he's probably – good chance he's not ready for game number two for them. I just, I don't see in Trubisky when you're going for a player with a level of experience that I think he runs this offense well enough to do what I'm saying is I, you want your backup quarterback to do. Yeah. But that being said, they have faith in him. And you had him and you brought him back. Yeah, I mean, they clearly do, but. So that the only reason I'm bringing that up is you say, would they go and get a Tannehill? I think it would be based on injury. It's not like Tannehill was great, but he started a ton of games in his career. He's a ton of experience. And he's had success. So 
Um, there will be players out there. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm not thrilled with what I see at backup quarterback. I'm waiting for this team to go back to the well. Maybe it'd be next year and draft a young player and hope that he can be a cheaper alternative. The Jake Fromm. The, yeah, that I mean, didn't that was work. A, I mean, that was also a very weird It's also a little season. on the early side to be drafting a young quarterback, too. Josh has now been around the league long enough. Yes. You could do it, it seems more likely. So, no, I'm not thrilled with what it is, but I'd take a healthy Trubisky as the backup right now. Yeah. Just to say, if he needs to go out there for a little bit, maybe you can get by. But I, I didn't love it. I don't love it now. Depending on the injury of how injured Trubisky is, too, that is how they'll make their move, in my opinion. Yes. If it's something that's a long term, they're obviously going to need to bring in someone else. If it seems something short term, maybe they bring in a guy off the street that, you know, is a Ben DiNucci type player. Yeah. Okay, so we have our next question from Max Herzog, 3287. Are you concerned about overall depth? We all know the Marv quote, but injuries are already stacking up. Yeah. Um, Marv's quote, depth is a great thing until you have to use it. It's a bar right there. <laughs> it is. Uh, they have had to use it. They are, well, they have lost certainly quality depth or at least experienced depth. Perfect example would be DeMar Hamlin. Experience depth, but right now he's your starter. Yeah. Now, when DeMar, if it works out that, say, eventually, say, Mike Edwards is a starter. Okay. It's been around the league longer. A guy like DeMar is a good depth piece, but right now he's a starter. Behind him, it's tough, yeah. and they've lost those guys. At wide receiver, it's guys who have not been in the system, so you don't... Now, I didn't think they had great depth at those positions last year. I mean, they did have DeMar, but he wasn't, Back. I think he's much better. Yeah, yeah. He looks much better this yeah. year. Um, but they, you know, if you think about it, uh, you know, their starting number one safety right now was their first backup a year ago because you yeah. had Poyer and Hyde. That's a very good point. You know, and, and everything gets tested. The offensive line, everything gets tested, like you said, with quarterback being out. Um, no, I think I think that's an issue for them. It's what happens when you make the amount of changes that they did, and you're hoping young players will be ready. But a perfect example of that is Cole Bishop. You expected him to be ready to be the backup safety, and he hasn't been on the field. So, yeah, it's really tested. He could be ready in a few weeks, but he hasn't played at all. So. I mean, there's where your problem is they took they rolled the dice you know kind of restarting and retooling their secondary and all those things or you can even say their wide receiver yeah room. but the injuries just add another element of a, a challenging aspect to it and yeah. i i think the injuries obviously are stacking up and i am also concerned about the depth because there's depth and then there's the depth behind the depth you yeah. know what i'm talking about damar was supposed to be a guy that was the depth and yeah. so for him to be injured for cole bishop to be injured for mike edwards to be injured it's like it's really hard for this team because of all the injuries that we have seen now look it is still the summer there is still time all these things but like you said i mean you reps are really important too so what this team does is going to be really something to watch because it's like they already had you know, they already went into it with a lot of new faces, and now it's like one hand's tied behind their back in a bit. So we're recording this on the 19th of August. Mm -hmm. We've talked about Micah Hyde before. If Micah Hyde was coming back, if this was this big wait to come back, or oh, I'm going to wait and wait and then be ready, I think he'd already be in the building. It's August 19th. It's 20 days until the season starts. If his plan, if it was this, we know it, Mike is coming back, he's going to skip camp, he's going to come in and get himself ready. 20 days until the season, he'd be here. If it's more of Micah saying, break glass in emergency, I'll come back in October, well, then it's, it's still August. But my point is, if it was just to skip camp and be here, I think he'd be here already. I agree, but I think the plan or the the thought was always October okay. or November. That's fine. But you did make an interesting point about the jerseys. About how they haven't given Oh, they haven't given out his number. Well I think that's I think that's a I mean that's a something to note. It is. It is because the other guy went to the Dolphins and Mike Edwards has his number. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't hand out some numbers and you think like 
How do they feel about that player? Well, like um, it's weird seeing another 27 on the field. It's yeah. weird seeing another 21, but obviously there's no other 23. Yeah, right, because they only... They, yes, there's a difference between we're going to retire this number and we're waiting to see if that dude shows up. <laughs> I think that he might that. come walking in. But by the way, Micah, I know you watch. You can come back now. There's well, it's a place funny. For we you. always thought break glass in case of emergency would be in the fall. And it's yeah. like, it is literally hey, August and it's like break hold glass. On. Micah, it's going to be 58 on Tuesday morning. Feels that like would, fall. That would not encourage me. If I were <laughs> <laughs> Considering he's in San Diego. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would not. That's not a selling point in yeah. my opinion. Um, NTJ Hughes, uh, his question or their question, does Joe Andreessen have a realistic chance to make the team with Milano out? I think the Joe Andreessen, everyone thinks, what a cool story. Like, yeah. what an unbelievable moment for this guy who <laughs> is from Western New York, went to UB for him growing up being a Bills fan, to know that he's getting the start on Thursday in the preseason against the Steelers. Oh, and he's going to start this week, too. You oh, know well, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the 12 tackles flying all over the field, like, it's a feel-good story, A, but B, it's also a guy who is taking advantage of an opportunity that not really anyone expected him to be starting. So we were at minicamp, rookie minicamp. Mm -hmm. First day, all those guys are there. Joe Andreessen's there. He's in that list of tryout guys. So he wasn't even, he was like, let me see what he can do. And a lot of the, the Buffalo people were like, hey, we know Joe, blah, blah, blah. We've been following him from UB. He's the local guy. And then he comes to the Bills and gets his invitation pretty quickly. They looked at him and said, you're, you're coming, mm -hmm. spent the off season. So this guy has been in the building and <laughs> Which so we have not, <laughs> we have not been, well, we've been in the building, yeah, but say, not yeah. in the building. Yeah. So he knows the defense and McDermott said when they put him, he said today, when they put him to focus on middle linebacker, it clicked for him. So they like him in that role. So he had a lot of snaps playing for Ter uh, Terrell, Terrell Bernard. Bernard. Yeah. This guy's not going anywhere. He's going to be on the 53. You think he's making the 53? I think he's making the 53. He put tape out there. Brian Baldinger, you guys probably follow him. Baldy does the breakdowns, loves tape. He reviewed the guy as an NFL player. And Sean said, he loves this line, he's a football player. <laughs> We're not signing track guys. He said he's got instincts. We've talked about that, the linebacker position. Not saying he is playing in place of Terrell Bernard, but there's a spot on this team for backup linebacker. Yeah. I, I think there is. Yeah. And I don't think they could, let me tell you, there are teams, teams don't prioritize linebacker, give them big money, but they all seem to need a linebacker. He can play special teams. He can play if needed in that position. And if you talk about knowing the defense and having the instincts, when Sean is saying that, you watched him the other night. He played like a guy who belonged. I understand it's not top-level players. We're not talking about him being a starting player. We're talking about the difference between saying we can cut him and get him back. You put 12 tackles out there. Yeah. You put good tape out there. You get a lot of attention. I think he gets picked up if he got cut. Interesting. And I normally am not the guy that always says, yeah, everybody loves this guy. No, I, I think if if he got cut, he gets picked up. Do you think Saturday? He starts. Well, yes, he starts, but let's... Okay. All right. Were I you going to say play him less? So he no, doesn't make a no. I'm saying like if he has like a like he played out of his mind on Saturday. So if 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 he continues at that level, absolutely. But I would say knowing the way McDermott is, I think part of him has already made up his mind. Really? Yeah, I think he's impressed them. They have Eddie Ulafoshio. Yep. They have well Nick Morrow's injured. I believe now he's he's going to be in that same status. I think of getting to the okay. walkthroughs and all. Okay. Nick Morrow's been around. He has. He's Guys like Nick Morrow, who's been a 
good NFL player. You know the floor, but you also know the ceiling. I think there's players like that out there. That's fair. I this mean, guy's that young. Be amazing. And he... is young. Yeah. And he's he's got something. Well, Bale Inspector is also that. who I think has looked good. I think so too. But that puts it's just a that position group has turned very. Yeah. Well, they got enough other injured guys. There's space for another yeah. linebacker. I mean, Joe, the Joe Andreessen watching him was obviously the highlight of Saturday. I mean, Greg Rousseau was outstanding, but seeing Andreessen was really cool. So I just, I guess to me, I felt like what's his path to make the roster, but you make some good points about what you can see and the fact that you're right, Baldy doing those breakdowns, uh, that. It gets more attention for the yeah, guy. It, it, and I'm not saying other teams aren't looking, but all of a sudden, it's somebody that I do think around the league breaks down tape well. I think people will notice some stuff. Mm -hmm. It puts him, like you said, puts him on other teams' radar that they, you know, because he's the kind of guy that easily could have slipped through the cracks. Oh, absolutely. Because he was a unsigned, undrafted guy that they brought in. And if he didn't have that game the other day, you probably could have cut him and brought him back. But I do think it it opened up some eyes. Yeah. All right, we're going to continue on. I just want to remind everyone, you can find the Buffalo Plus podcast. It's also an audio-only podcast available wherever you find your stuff, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, all that great stuff. As we continue, You Ask, We Answer, presented by Stellar. All right, uh, at Sam the Sham, 4684, Based on what we've seen in the past two preseason games, is the window closed, wide open, or slightly ajar? Also, great use of a jar. I know. <laughs> wow. It's the I internet. Know. That's what are you doing? Wow. Um, the window is open because of Josh Allen. He's only thrown three passes this preseason. Not great that they haven't scored a touchdown. Um, but I think this team going into this season with the injuries. We we said before talking about camp off camera. I don't yeah. know if we said it on camera, like a eleven and six, ten and seven, because the Bills' schedule is also very hard. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You don't. Think no, so? I mean it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think there is just something to be said of having injuries, having to need the depth probably sooner than I think they were expecting. Yeah. So I I feel like. The window is open, but even you hear the Bills talk about it. When we interviewed Brandon Bean, even Josh Allen on the Green Lights podcast with Chris Long, he said, you know, the goal is to win the division and then get into the mix. Yeah. And I think that's spot on for what this team should be aiming towards. Well, you also, when we talk about these injuries, Milano's is the long-term one, and the hope is that he could be back at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. The rest of these are just, just make the beginning of the season a mess. They yeah. can get these guys back. But in terms of Josh, um, credit to me. <laughs> it's because Dan's not here. I said I would play him in the first preseason game. I would play him in the scrimmage for the second game, and I wouldn't play him in the third. Now, Mother Nature and injuries have contributed, but I'm going to be like Dan and block all that out and just say I was right about how to play Josh. <laughs> if Sean actually even said he was going to play the other night, and I was going to play him. But regardless, yeah. oh, actually, he kind of said he wasn't going to play in the third game. So I think Sean and I were on the same page. So we Look discussed it a little <laughs> bit um, in terms of that. I was thinking of Jordan Love and Josh. Jordan Love played maybe five plays, threw a beautiful deep ball for a touchdown, 65 yards. I know if you're a Packers fan, you're like, yes, my guy <laughs> yeah. is ready. Jordan Love looked good. It was great. Just how that play matters in three weeks when they start the season in Brazil against the Eagles. Jordan Love's going to be good. He's really good. I don't think that one bit of success, as opposed to Josh not scoring a touchdown in his, what did he throw, five passes? He's throwing? Three. Three passes for Josh. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You said three passes. I don't think it makes any difference. They get their work in at other times. You protect that quarterback is what most teams do. But I would say the window is, oh, I still believe the window is open mm -hmm. for this team. I mean, like you said, when they have the quarterback, we have to see how this team plays out. Yeah. Because it doesn't mean that that means, because I think the window's open, that they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. 
But I do believe because of Allen and because of the talent they have. You know, this team has Terrell Bernard, and they have Ed Oliver, and they have Taron Johnson. And Rasul, Rasul Douglas. Douglas. You know, I mean, they have talented players. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, offensively, I think they have a really good offensive line. I like the coaching staff. There's a lot of things to like about this team. Yeah. So window is open. Uh, it's a jar. Wait, isn't a jar mean slightly? Slightly open. Okay. But a jar would be a negative thing, right? The door is a jar because you're supposed to close it, right? Um, like in your car. Yeah, if your door is a jar. Yeah. I mean, I think that... If we're talking about Super Bowl expectations from for this year, I would say it's closer to slightly ajar than it is wide open. Yeah. But I think for this franchise with Josh Allen as their quarterback, it's wide open. What in it the, is in right the now general yes. context of Josh Allen. What it is right now, it's your refrigerator door when you leave it open just a little bit and then it starts making that noise. When you want to go back and see if you want another <laughs> snack. <laughs> Well, it's annoying though because Everyone right now right, <laughs> right now that beep 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 is annoying because it what that is is all the mess because you don't really know about these positions and now the guys they brought in are banged up anyhow i mean i may mention four of them but the world may look different in a few weeks okay so let's see where they are in a couple of weeks but it's 20 days till the season starts so that's crazy it's 20 days away yep you're okay. gonna be busy <laughs> Well, we all maybe are. I'll take a vacation. Yeah. Who would take a vacation in August? Maybe I don't know. No, okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's do this is our final question at Ball in ninety seven. Yep. Which rookie will have the biggest impact this season? Keon Coleman, Ray Davis, Daquan Hardy, or Joe Andreessen? I'm gonna let you go first because there's one I wanna say. Do you wanna say Ray Davis? Yeah. Yeah. Dan was at the uh, joint practices in Pittsburgh on Thursday. He said that Davis was out wide catching passes. And he said, he look, he wasn't as fluid as a wide receiver, but he just looked natural at it. He had that poise. And I think we saw some of that physicality. Like, Ray Davis runs with some punch. Yep. Um, so for him to have the ability to run the ball, also the ability to be a pass catcher, I think he's going to surprise some people. Um, but I think big play impact to me, it's more Keon Coleman just because look, I haven't liked him. I mean, Josh has thrown three passes, but, um, I wish Keon was a little bit more involved in the preseason when he's been on the field. But I do think looking at the season and my expectations, I feel like Keon will have more of those big play moments. Yeah. Uh, I think it's harder for a wide receiver to have the weekly impact because it takes a lot. They can get the ball in Ray Davis's hands if they want, easier than it is to say you're gonna get it to the receiver. The one play over the middle, God, there's so much focus on that one play. Oh, Trubisky, Trubisky threw the ball. In the red zone. It was a hospital ball. I, I agree. And look, would it be, be great if he caught it? Great. Would people be like, wow, what an effort by Coleman. He got, and then he got popped. Yeah. And he's joining the guys who are injured. I don't think he made a business decision. I just, I don't know. He had to sense a little bit of what that was. But that that seems to be getting a lot of play. I think Keon's going to be fine. I just think that it's, and by the way, I've liked what I've seen I that I saw the other night and even from what some of the things I heard from practice. James Cook has looked good. Yeah. A little but more jump to him, a little more, I mean, he, these backs seem to complement each other. We always have been looking for that. I have a feeling they will. We wanted it so bad with Devin Singletary yeah. and Zach Moss. Yeah. Um, it, it just didn't happen. And no fumbles, which yep. I know is like, oh, really? That's great. Yeah. But considering what we saw before, it's nice to see some ball security. Yeah. And, and they need it. So we're going to get surprised, I think. Mm -hmm. Be Joe Andreessen. Who knows? Wouldn't that be something? I just, I, I'm going out there saying, I don't even think it's going that far on a limb to say he's going to make the 53. I just I mean, feel that it would for be him. A, a really cool. Now, I will say another thing. We don't know what they think of him longer term. I just see when they see a guy like this, they think, wow, look where he is now. He's, he's 
competent and has good instincts. We're not giving up on this guy to go losing him um, just to try to throw him yeah. out there on the on the uh, yeah. waiver and wire. If the Bills were to cut him, another team would have to put them on their 53. So there's it's not some, like they can put him right on another team's practice squad. But there's some teams out there that oh, are going to take their chances on young talent. I agree. I yeah. think that is the case. I guess I just, I don't know. That would be really cool. Yeah. I mean, they have, obviously, Cam Lewis, Jamarcus Ingram, other UB products yeah. on, on the team. But to have a guy from, that's so cool. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just, that's. Daquan Hardy's interesting. Um, you got to be really good at the return game. He showed flashes of that, too. Decision-making, Sean talked about that today, especially for young players in that spot. Like, you got to be smart mm -hmm. about it. That's the one thing. Like, they're going to have to, especially early in the year, they're going to have to trust those guys. But he could have a way different kind of impact, like three or four big-time plays in the return game, whereas the other guys would be more week-to-week. -week, you would be thinking of a guy like Davis or, yeah. or certainly a guy like Keon. No, it makes sense. All right, anything else you want to add? No, I, it's going to be just... How are you feeling? You know, like you're rested, back. Rested. Uh, well, rested, you know. Two little grandbabies with us. They like to get up early. Um, it was fun. It was fun. But I was definitely keeping my eye on things. I definitely got a chance to watch the game. So, you know, it's vacation. And sometimes that, to me, is relaxing a little bit. Going I'm, on vacation? <laughs> no, I'm saying is while I'm there, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I want to know what's going on. Oh, yeah, I get it. And by the way, Dan, Dan. Dan held his Dan own held down it down in Pittsburgh. He did. he did a great job. Yeah. He really did. It looked hot on Thursday. And yeah. Then it was, it was a bit hotter. <laughs> Dan is Dan a man. Dan cannot catch a break. Of if the we just want to tell everybody, so we're recording this. Dan's playing in the Amherst Alumni Golf Tournament. I've got I've gotten to play in that a bunch of years. And since I was coming back from vacation, I said, Dan, you should play. He's like, great. By the way, Dan was a celebrity in his group. He was can we, can we tell? Can we tell? Well, I, my story with that is I was in an Amherst golf tournament 30 years ago. And I go out to the, to the we were going on different holes, and there's a group of guys there. And, and they meet me. And they go, hey, how's it going? I say, good. Then I hear them talking, and they say, I wonder who we're going to get as our celebrity. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so then I had to break it to them that I was their celebrity. <laughs> And they were pretty, they were good sports. We ended up having a lot of fun. So Dan was going, oh no, that's going to be me today. So we'll see what kind of respect. He's Buffalo Plus now. I He's mean, big. You're both celebrities. Yeah. You're yeah, a Hall well, of Famer. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a lot of years after that time I was out there. So Dan's out there. But the reason I brought it up is it's a lot of fun. You're out there. Of course, today it poured. It was raining sideways this afternoon. Poor Dan. Yeah. That's okay. That's all right. He had fun. Yeah. All right. Thank you for joining us. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. We always appreciate it. Again, this segment, You Ask, We Answer, presented by Stellar Roofing, Windows, and Siding. We want to thank Greg Connors and Connors and Ferris as well for sponsoring the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. We'll catch you next time here. Love you guys. We'll start with this question from Robin. So there's still a damn good defense. I have zero problem with them bringing this guy in.